What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PGCGO today, and today I am playing Danny Altavilla's Malamar List from the Memphis Regional Championships. He was able to win his fifth regional title this past weekend, so that was pretty crazy. This is, from what I understand, Rukan's list, and a lot of DDG team members ended up playing this list at the regional championships. It was pretty cool. Has a spicy tech in there with that Chimeco, or I just call him like Chimcho or Chimico, I don't know, the Chimeco, whatever it is called. They've got that in there. Now that is a pretty wild tech for the Malamar deck. Pretty wild card you got there, but makes a lot of sense. You can attack with it and it prevents your opponent from playing any Pokemon that have abilities from their hand. So definitely can just you know completely shut down certain archetypes and we can see here versus zork it is going to be a very valuable i already have it in my hand if the card is in deck i have a turn one chimeco right so that would be pretty insane we are going to try and set up a little bit get cards that maybe are not just chimeco but otherwise we can kind of get rolling here i actually think i want the turn one lily instead of the inke like we can get other things from there honestly and then let's acro bike again we'll take the marshadow that's fine ditch that thing then we can um put the marshadow down escape rope and at this point like if we can just discard the chimeco then we are going to be you know kind of in the clear to set up which will be very cool so let's mysterious treasure away and this is funny that uh, that we run into this situation. Uh, I, I read Rukan's post, and we do have the Chimeco. There it is, right? Uh, I was reading Rukan's post, and Rukan said that he cut to three Guzma because they were kind of clunking up his hands early game. We can see kind of the same thing happening here. We'll go ahead and escape rope, get the Marshadow into the active position, attach a energy to it and lily now if we can just find a way to get that chimeco into the discard pile then we are going to be good to lock my opponent up though we do have a little bit of an odd hand here so we can nest ball I actually get to rescue stretcher that NK back into play so that's very good let's go ahead and put up actually we don't have to get we could just actually nest ball for the chimeco we don't have to uh, we don't have to discard it, so we're actually completely fine. Let's just go ahead and do this, and then we'll kind of figure out where to go next turn from here. I don't necessarily, I mean, I guess I could Nest Ball get the Chimeco out into play. I could Ultra Ball away these two guys. Uh, in case I get turn one judged, I guess. That's uh, my thought, but we'll kind of just wait and see from here. I think I would rather... I uh, would rather uh, attack with the Marshadow with Chimeco. That's going to be much better because then I can attack with the Marshadow, lock things up, right, uh, with the Chimeco, make it so my opponent cannot play abilities down. Uh, they do have this Latios, though. That is going to be very good uh, versus Chimeco, as is Garbodor, assuming they play Trash Lance Garbodor in here. So that might be a little bit of a workaround for them gonna be completely fine now we do have a skateboard Rukan was very adamant about four skateboard being uh, optimal in his list he says that that is not a point of uh, that is not something that you can uh, compromise right that is not a point of compromise not the escape boards they can't go and hey you know what happy to hear that because i love skateboards so that is fine with me now we can kind of lock my opponent up you know, with the Chimeco this turn, though it is a little bit underwhelming. I think it's probably fine. We probably just go in with the Chimeco to buy a couple turns. Uh, so let's just Nest Ball and just go get it. And then I can Ultra Ball, you know, get some other things going. Uh, we could get the Tapu Lele. I think that we just Bell of Silence, though, and we just kind of go from there. And let's see, I can Ultra Ball away these two guys, get them both into the discard pile, start attacking with the Marshadows. I think, honestly, and I could go get Lele. That just kind of locks me up, though. I don't really love getting Lele here, but I think I'd rather get Lele than just no draw supporter, right? So let's, uh, let's throw the escape board there. Let's evolve here. 
Do we have any energy in the discard pile? I probably should have. Yeah, I got one. That's fine. We'll do that. And then let's just play our supporter. Yeah. And get a probably a Cynthia is fine. Uh, well, actually, Lily for like five isn't bad in this situation. We'll Lily here just because you never know. There's, Lily will probably be worse later in the game. So I'm fine just Lilying for five. There are not things. See, this is. This is fine, as as we know. The saying goes, all right, we're going to retreat into Chimeco here. We're going to Psychic Recharge, get ourselves another energy, and then just Bell of Silence. We can kind of... We can kind of lock things up a little bit, make it so that my opponent can't play Pokemon with abilities. Literally all the Pokemon in their deck have abilities. I think, like, uh, except for this Latios, who is a little bit scary, uh, but that Latios is not going to be one-hit KOing my Chimeco. Now, they are getting things like Zoroks into their hand and Macargo into their hand, but they can't play them yet. Um, so they are just going to have to bide their time. Now, that being said, I'm not exactly off to the races, you know, like I'm not doing a whole lot here, but we do have the ability to kind of just sit back and, uh, you know, just uh, play the game at our pace, which is nice being a Malamar deck. Usually we get kind of run off the board here pretty quickly. So my opponent probably wants to start using Lagoon Flight. That is a little bit stressful. So I am going to have to figure out some plays to help me get around that. If they just have DCE, I assumed if they had DCE Choice Band Guzma, like they would have played it, right? So they did not have all of that or else they would have done that a while ago. Now, I'm going to look for some Guzmas. I need Guzmas in order to, I would like to take out the Lele probably. I mean, there's just a bunch of things that I can do. But it's all good. Let's, uh, let's see, a skateboard. We got a skateboard. I don't think that I actually want to go in and attack here. I feel like just Bell of Silence is just superior to all my other plays. So let's just continue using Bell of Silence then and continue to chip away at this Slugma. And my opponent just needs to get, you know, Guzma DCE. And I can just take my time, take my prizes, um, you know, and just be okay until they until they finally end up top decking. I'll slap the escape board there, and we're just going to Cynthia again. I don't really need to grind out any other cards there. I don't really need to play anything else. We finally do have our Guzma. I guess I, mean, I technically should have attached that energy before the Cynthia, but I'm not even thinking that I really want it anywhere. That's why I kind of wasn't playing it. I think I'm just going to Bell of Silence again and continue doing that. I think if we knock out the Slugma eventually, we could Guzma. We can knock out a Zerua. I think we kind of just keep going, though. Honestly, I don't really feel the need to, to do anything else. If my opponent has a DCE, they're probably saving it in hand, and we'll just take out my Chimeco uh, with the Latios. And these Latioses are pretty intimidating just because of the fact that they they just can knock out my Marshadow with a Choice Band. So I do have to be a little bit wary of that. They've drawn like half their deck at this point. But, you know, if they Guzma knock out Marshadow, then we're kind of off to the races then. We have to start aggressing. You know, maybe I can attack with a Malamar, actually. It's not great, but uh, we're just going to say that they ain't got it like that or else they would have done it. So we're almost through this Slugma. I imagine they're sitting on a DCE, but they just kind of plan on promoting the Latios. They don't have a switch card. They don't have DC Guzma or else they would have probably done that by now. So let's just uh, take out the Slugma, take our first prize, then we'll figure out where to go from here. I don't like that we started our Marsh Shadow this game. Uh, that is a little bit of a downer, right? Because this thing just, uh, you know, it just taken up a bench spot, uh, a bench spot, a bench spot. I would much rather have a third Malamar in play. That would just give me much more stability, I think. Now, this upcoming turn, we definitely can, like, nuke this Lele. That is an option for us. I uh, can also, let's see, do they have a DCE even? If they don't have a DCE, then they're just going to pass, and I'm going to continue using Bell of Silence to just uh, keep 
chugging away here until we are just, uh, you know, as far ahead as we can get. They didn't get it. So you can see just how commanding this board position is. It just doesn't even matter. We just continue using Bell of Silence until this guy goes down. We are using Bell of Silence for 20 damage a turn here. Um, they don't have, I mean, most of the Zorark decks are playing low counts of Cynthia as well. They just plan on drawing the cards they need with, uh, with Lily early on, Kakui and Makargo in combination, but my opponent cannot actually play, uh, their Makargo down, right? Because I'm continuing to use Bell of Silence. Now, an interesting play that I can do is I can like Guzma Azurua and I can Bell of Silence that, with my Marshadow, uh, is that worth it? I don't think so. I feel like we have to just make plays happen now. Uh, like now we probably just try to win. So we would like Guzma knock out a Lele, but then if they knock me out with the Latios, then you know we're kind of in a sketchy situation there. So I think I'll promote the Marshadow while I kind of think about what I want to do. Do I want to Guzma this turn? Do I just continue using Bell of Silence? Um, probably, uh, though that Latios is one hit KOing my Marshadow now, so I probably can't just rock with that. We're probably just gonna knock out the Latios with a Deoxys and then continue trading and hope that my opponent doesn't knock out my Marshadow. That actually seems like the most ideal play. So do I have enough energy in the discard pile? I do. I should have two, one. That's just enough. So we're going to knock out this Latios with a Deoxys and try to stay ahead of the trade here. Let's Mysterious Treasure away. Just one Psychic Energy is all we have to do. We'll get ourselves another card here just in the hand. And that's fine. And then we could Psychic Recharge two times and use that Power Blast. We don't actually even need to. We can just do two, four, six. We could just Psychic. So I can leave that energy in the discard pile. I believe that probably is okay. And then if they go up in prizes, I can, I'll just leave that Psychic energy in my hand actually, just so I have a third to attach should I need it. I also could put the escape board on the Marshadow. Uh, that probably seems fine. Let's just keep that energy on there. We're gonna retreat and use Psychic, knock out that Latios there. Take that thing down. Now my opponent can play all of their ability cards, but I have my final two Guzmas in hand. So as long as I can just keep streaming cards that I need to stream, though my opponent at this point, they do have both Zorx and Macargo. So they may be able to just trade Guzma and knock out my Marshadow. If they do that, I will GX a Zorark. Uh, which is pretty good. So I'll be able to use my Moon's Eclipse, uh, take out a Zork with that, and then I'll be down at two prizes remaining. And I think I just win at that point because I, you know, can I make my Marshadow invincible? I don't think that my opponent is going to be able to knock out this Lele here. I mean, they would just go to three prizes. So I think that's ideal for me if they do that. Uh, I'm weirdly ideal, right? If they knock out my benched Marshadow, I just have such a power play on my hands. But we could see how the Chimeco just like single-handedly just put me in this commanding position. It turned what was a shaky matchup for this archetype into a fantastic one. And we could see even with the likes of Latios in this deck, a card that should make the Chimeco pretty much null and void. And that card just should be excellent against my entire deck. It really didn't even make that much of a difference. The Chimeco was still just so, uh, so rough for my opponent to deal with because the Zorak decks don't, just don't play those natural draw cards that they need in order to hit things like Double Colorless Energy, Guzma, and all of that. So they are going to bring up a Malamar, knock it out. That is very interesting, okay? Uh, that is very interesting. I'm not sure, why did they Lagoon Flight the Malamar? They did not want to activate my GX attack. That is... Definitely interesting. I think at this point, we are good. We just stay the course. Now we just Guzma and knock out his Zorark, put an Inkay down, and then I have Guzma for game. 
when I need it. So we're just going to do that. We're going to Guzma knock out a Zorark. And now I just need to pull off back to back Guzmas and I'm good to go. I've got a Psychic Energy. I'll have two in the discard pile, Malamar and Marshadow in hand. So I have everything in hand that I need in order to, let's see, we actually just Dark Flash, which is weird. Uh, we Dark Flash here instead of Prismatic Burst, just keep the energy on board. Um, we don't Black Ray GX for sure. We don't Prismatic Burst, there's no need to. So yeah, let's just Dark Flash, knock out that, and then we just need Guzma and attack with the Marshadow for game there. But my opponent could very easily just, you know, rain on my parade here. They could, uh, you know, with two Zoroarks out and a Macargo, they can very easily get themselves a hand with Guzma. And then they're knocking out my Marshadow with a one prize Latios. That's fine. I mean, more or less, I can go and get myself just a Psychic Energy and knock out that Latios with the Deoxys. So that should be okay. I'm still confused as to why the weakness policy went there. I guess they just didn't want to get psychic for knockout, which does make sense, but they know with just one more attachment from hand that I can knock out the Latios anyway. So they have Rescue Stretcher. The question is, are they gonna get themselves a judge? Oh, they're getting the Marshadow. So they will be using Let Loose here. That is a good play. I still think that I'm in a commanding position even when they let loose, even when they knock out this Marshadow. All I have to do is announce an attack onto one of these Zoraks here, or knock out the Latios, knock out the Marshadow, or the Macargo for game. So I do have a definite route here. And we can see that I draw pretty well off of this. I have myself Mysterious Treasure, I've got another Deoxys, so I can get myself another copy of, um, of Malamar as well, which is going to be good, and there he is. Okay, so, I think here, uh, we probably Mysterious Treasure away the Mysterious Treasure, bench the Deoxys, and just go in for an attack on the Latios. That just seems to make the most sense, yep. Because I just wanna get myself game-winning cards in hand for next turn. I don't think, yeah, I don't think that it's worth it to not bench this Deoxys. Yeah, we just bench that. We need to hit an energy. I could have gotten myself the Oracorio. That seemed kind of, I guess that might have been slightly better, but let's just Lily here. And if we miss the Psychic, I mean, we're going to be very salty. No, we, oh goodness, we just barely got it. Uh, so that was good. Uh, but I don't have the game winning play in hand. So I may end up having to Lily for it, which just, or Cynthia for it next turn, which just will be stressful i don't want to do that let's uh let's just go ahead psychic recharge once uh, onto the deoxys twice onto the deoxys just get that thing ready to go in case we top deck guzma or something uh, then we'll just be ready to go with this backup deoxys here so just power blast knock out the latios see if we get anything that helps off of this final draw here we can see uh, we were in a very commanding position. Now with this Ultra Ball, we are looking much stronger. We just need to get that Marsh Shadow now and we can win the game. Uh, if my opponent Guzmas and knocks out a Malamar, that is a much more stressful situation because then I cannot win. I think then uh, I'm just, uh, I just take an L unless I top deck Guzma. So unfortunate. Uh, definitely unfortunate. This is a game where we just wish we had that Marsh Shadow left in the tank to go dig us out more cards. We are just stuck here with this hand that we have, and that's just about it. Uh, we can see now, oh, they make it even harder for me to win. They've now got weakness policies on each of their Zorks, so Marsh Shadow no longer wins me the game. And we can see it's a very good deck. Obviously, they were able to kind of take control of the situation here. Um, just uh, being able to get that, um, that Macargo up and running. Now they are looking stronger than ever. So what are we banking on? Uh, we can't GX. We can't knock them out with our, you know, with our Marshadow. So what do we do? It's just a tough call. We gotta hope we top deck Guzma, right? Like, that's just uh, that's just what we're looking at. So, yep, hope we top deck Guzma. 
and we could knock out one of those guys on the bench. We did not. We got Rescue Stretcher. That doesn't really help us. Uh, Bell of Silence does no good now. We cannot use that Moon's Eclipse GX either. Just a horribly tough situation. I can't Rescue Stretcher or anything. Uh, I think the weakness policy really just putting a damper on everything here. We know that my opponent's going to be able to win the game if... Um, yeah, we know they're going to be able to win the game this next turn. So I think that's just it, right? I mean, I think that just is unfortunately the situation. We need a Guzma there. Let's, uh, let's Ultra Ball, I guess. It just seems completely rough. We had our one Guzma in deck. Didn't get it. Rescue Stretcher doesn't do anything for us. We can't make ourselves invincible, just like going through all the options here. I think we just don't have it like that. It's just uh, just a tough, tough situation here. Tough rips. So, yeah, that let loose for my opponent was really, really good. Uh, I think the only thing that we could do is just promote the Tapu Lele, but honestly, if they could just have Guzma in deck, they can just win, and they've only played one Guzma, so... The odds of them having a Guzma are pretty high. Guzma Energy, they can probably put that together with their very small deck. Uh, I also don't have the game-winning Guzma yet, so I just would have to Psychic Recharge twice onto my Marshadow and just uh, promote my Lele and hope they can't knock it out. Uh, that's just a, kind of a horrible space to be in. I think the Chimeco is very good. Uh, obviously, it did slow the game down, but we can see how Zora can still just take command of a situation just like that, you know? And the weakness policy, the well-placed weakness policy uh, was just enough to get there. Even if I just still had my escape rope in deck, we could have gotten there with this game. Just a tough go all around. And then I think I just place this here. Uh, I have to just escape board retreat for game. So let's just pass my opponent. If they got it, they got it. Uh, they can just Kakui, I and mean, honestly, Kakui, Devoured Field, you know, a bunch of ways to do it. They should draw their deck out. They have Macargo. I don't imagine that there's any planet where they miss game here, but, you know, uh, I've seen crazier things, I guess. But between all these trades, they get to draw out their card, have four cards left in deck. It is a two-card combo that they need. Uh, they do need Energy Guzma. So they do have the Guzma here, though. So we're just assuming that they got the energy in hand. They haven't. Yep. So good game to my opponent, man. I thought that we were going to be able to get there on that one. Just things got weird there after the let loose. I'm not sure that with starting the Marshadow, I don't think that there was anything better I could have done. Uh, I guess uh, my bench just got very much jammed there very quick. I have to get to class here shortly, but I am going to go one more game. I think we can win one with this Malamar list. The Malamar list is very, very good, uh, and I think that Jameco makes it much better. I feel like it, versus decks like Vika Ray and things like that, you can just slow the matchup down, which is what Malamar needs. Malamar needs the game to be slowed to its pace. Though I had a kind of stressful experience with Malamar, and again, we started a suboptimal starter. That is just, ugh, yikes. Though I did have a suboptimal experience with Malamar myself at the Cup this past weekend, it definitely showed its stuff at Memphis, believe it was Malamar Mirror in the finals. And we see a Wimpod here in the active. I saw, I think, a top 16 list that was just straight Galisopod. So that was very cool. I uh, was peeking online and saw that. So that was that was sweet, and that would be something I would like to show off here on the channel as well. I should not have used that nest ball first. Uh, that was a little bit of a, that was a little bit of a goof on my part. I should have acro biked first there. That was just a little bit of a, whoops. Well, oh well. We've got ourselves in K here. Now Kalispot doesn't have an ability, so. Uh, we could Chimeco turn one, right? I mean, you could Bella Silence. I, honestly, I'm not like super concerned about it. I don't. I mean, it's probably good versus whatever they're doing, but I'm assuming this is the straight Galisopod version of this deck, in which case, it doesn't really make a big difference. Uh, we could be funny though and just go in with it. At this point, we have it, so I think we just might as well, right? Uh, let's just go in. Uh, we got a skateboard on the active. We've got another acro bike. Let's see what we get. Got ourselves a rescue stretcher. Sure, we'll keep that. 
Um, yeah, we'll keep that. That's fine. And then uh, we can mysterious treasure away. Probably this Deoxys seems fine. And then we just get ourselves a... Yeah, we're going to get ourselves the man. The Chimeco. See what ends up happening. Now, he does have 70 hit points. And this is the non... You know, it's a non-GX. So... If he ends up getting punished, that's fine. Uh, we at least know that my opponent can't play anything like Lele down. So if they do end up able to kind of draw out of this, whatever drought or dead draw situation that they're in, the Chimeco might be able to help. Uh, but let's see, they do have a Galisopod. That's what I was thinking. This is just, uh, I think it's just straight Galisopod. But they don't have an attack. They are just going to be passing. So all they have is Glycopod. It's not super exciting, but let's see here. We can evolve into that dude there. Uh, we just want to accelerate and knock out this lone Glycopod as quickly as possible at this point. So I will just Mysterious Treasure away the Guzma. I don't think I need that. Let's get ourselves another... Let's get ourselves... I actually like the Oricorio. That's kind of cool, right? You can get yourself or choreo and just like get an energy into play, I guess. Uh, just to make sure that I get to retreat this. Um, yeah, let's just get the one. Make sure that I get to retreat this in K. I don't know. That's like a little bit of like a hyper conservative play, but oh well, that's fine. We're just gonna Cynthia. Uh, I think like I I did end up getting a switch card here, but I think I don't mind that. Just to just to get it out of the active. We know that's what we want. So here we're going to be able to get ourselves another copy of uh, get ourselves another copy of Malamar, and we're just going to go in with the Chimeco again, I think. Yep. So we are going to end up doing that. Let's just uh, psychic recharge once onto our own uh, Marshadow, and then we are going to Ultra Ball and away the Escape Rope. Get ourselves another copy of Malamar. Next turn, we are going to Lily. See if we can get all the technology we need to knock out this thing here. I'm going to evolve into another one of these dudes and accelerate again. And there we go. So we should be kind of cool and squared away. we got to hope that my opponent just doesn't, and I uh, doesn't, I don't know, get anything going, right? We kind of hope they don't. So I think at... Let's see, they would have 190. That's actually perfect. If I can discard a Ultra or an Acrosma GX, get a third energy onto this Marshadow GX, I do a perfect 190 damage. Now, if they do have Grass Energy, if they do uh, Armor Press or something like that, then I'm going to be a little bit shy. I would have to, like, uh, well, I do actually have the double Malamar here, so. I can't do that. And this is actually not the straight Galisopod deck. So this is a Galisopod Zoroark deck. So this is actually looking very good. Uh, very good for us. I think I can actually afford to Mysterious Treasure away the escape board just to thin the deck as much as possible. And let's Lily for six. Try to see what we can do here. Uh, we were not able... Well, not yet. Let's see. We can Acro Bike. Ugh, and we're still just a little bit short can't we need the uh we would need to be able to discard that so i don't think there's any point in getting friend ball we'll save the mar the malamar here and then i can't discard anybody useful so at this point i think that we just kind of stay the course we are going to psychic recharge a couple times start to build up attackers get some big boys out here right and then i guess like, I could Psychic Recharge onto the Lele. That feels kind of bad. Though, you never know. I mean, we could end up using the Lele to knock something out. I think we just keep it in the discard pile for now. It feels fine. Casual Slap, huh? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be using Casual Slap here anytime soon. So let's just Bell Silence. Keep this thing silenced until uh, we are ready to take that first knockout here. And then hopefully this game we don't fall behind in prizes like we did last time. We need to kind of stay ahead of the curve stay ahead of things um you know and Chimeco gives us the opportunity to do that but obviously with a well-timed uh marsh shadow like we saw last time or maybe a well-timed uh judge you know anything can happen especially with the malamar deck uh, just you know if you don't have three malamar down things can get a little sketchy so 
we get the Malamar into the active position. Let's see, where do we go from here? I think that, oh, this is beautiful actually, because I can actually get rid of these guys. So that's great. I think I just, yep, we attach the escape board to the active Malamar. Hope that we just hit a single energy off of this, which we got. So then we just continue to, do we continue to, no, we just knock this thing out, dude. Yep, for sure. We just knock it out and then hope the next turn we can knock out the Glycopod as well. So let's just retreat this into Mar Shadow here. And then I think that we just Psychic Recharge. I'm fine Psychic Recharging one onto like, I don't know, Lele. Seems fine. And then let's uh, Psychic, yeah, Prismatic Burst, no. Yeah, let's, um, we could Black Ray GX, that's interesting, right? Uh, and then like pretty much no matter what, we're gonna be able to knock out that thing next turn, except I don't think that that's, no, we're not Black Ray and GX, no, no, no. Uh, that would be so bad. We're gonna just Power Blast, yeah. Discard an energy, that's fine. And we should be able to knock out that thing next turn, I mean, at this point, I think that my opponent is dead drawing. They don't have anything. Maybe they have a Lele, though, that they were kind of gripping. They have been dead drawing for a while. But I don't think that they have any supporter cards. I think that they probably just have a handful of bad stuff. Oh, no, they did have a Lele. So they finally got themselves into a Lele. That's fine, though. At this point in the game, I think that uh, I probably will be able to more or less streamline attackers. I don't like that I keep getting myself in these situations with just the two Malamar, though. I think ideally I want three. It was very greedy of me putting this Oracorio down. I think I was valuing, yeah, I just, I didn't trust the deck, honestly. I didn't trust the deck to give me an escape board or the escape rope. I ended up getting both, um, so I didn't, I didn't trust the deck enough. I had to have a little more faith there. Uh, this is actually really bad because if my opponent just has a grass energy, they're going to cross and cut GX and just knock this thing out. Um, otherwise, yep, and they didn't get it. So never punished, uh, no worries. Mahone showcasing that Mahone luck here. So we are good to go. I think we're just going to Prismatic Burst this thing. And then honestly, this hand is like not super fantastic. So we're probably just gonna ship it um, and just shuffle into a new hand here. Let's just put that there. And then let's just, we're just shuffle drawing a new hand. Cynthia here. We want to see probably like more Guzmas. Yep, that's fine. Rush Stretcher Guzma. Cool. We probably want an energy or something eventually, but yikes. Uh, we can Psychic Recharge. Honestly, I don't really mind Psychic Recharging a couple times just to have a backup attacker. I feel like I'm going to need a backup attacker since I only have these two Malamars. I'm going to need to take a prize with something not named Marshadow eventually. So let's just Prismatic Burst, knock this thing out. Good to go. Go down to three prizes remaining. Hope that my opponent can't respond to it. And uh, hopefully I get a Psychic Energy as well. That'd be good because then I could just hit the Guzma play, knock out the Lele or something like that. But if not, maybe my opponent will bench a non-GX Pokemon that I can take out or just leave that Zerua there. That would be nice. If they just leave the Zerua there or if they get another Zerua into play, I can Guzma knock out the Zerua and then maybe we can finish the game off. Though, I think that my opponent is probably too far behind to come back. Now, I said I said that last game. It could also come back to bite me this game, too. But I think that I really am far enough ahead that we're just cool here in cruise control and should be all right. Uh, I think they would need to hit, you know, they can't hit it, right? I mean, they synthia it, so they can't hit it. They need a Kukui. I think with choice, actually, no, just choice bands all they need. They need choice band and they need a, bench, a bunch of bench Pokemon. I don't know what I'm talking about. So they need to fill their bench and they need to expand. Then they would have the knockout here. We can see they are playing things like Dene. They probably also have Coco in this list. That makes sense. It's like an older kind of uh, Galisopod list, like the kind that Pram would have been running. Uh, and they actually bought into exactly what I wanted them to do. So this is good. We are going to, let's see, how many energy do we have in the discard pile? Four. We can just at this point psychic recharge let's see show yeah yeah we're just gonna psychic recharge once onto this guy um and then let's guzma up that thing and knock it out i'm assuming that like my opponent yeah i actually want to retreat this energy off of this chimeco as well so let's uh let's psychic recharge the other energy onto the malamar here 
And then, uh, yeah, I just decided I want that energy in the discard pile. I don't want it to be stranded there. And then we're just gonna knock this thing out with energy drive. So now we have just two prizes left to take. Uh, so long as I can get some energy accelerated to this Marshadow on the bench, we should be cool. The reason I put the fourth energy on the Tapu Lele instead of just the three energy I needed to knock out the Dedenne is because I was just imagining a world where my opponent, um, you know, Guzmas and knocks out my Marshadow this turn. And if they do Guzma and knock out my Marshadow, I want to be able to two hit KO a Zorark. So we would two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, right? Uh, so I just wanted to be able to two hit KO uh, a Zorark guaranteed with my one Tapu Lele. It, that, that was just like my thought. So I don't think that that's a bad play necessarily. I think that, you know, we're good to go. They are gonna knock out my Marsh out of this turn. I'm just gonna bench the Marsh Shadow that I have in my hand and just win the game because I can double psychic recharge uh, and then and then do the thing there. So we should be good to go. Yeah, we got three energy in the discard pile, so no problems here. We are going to just bench and uh, and win. So we're cool. We can even Ultra Ball away our Dawn Wings. We can just do it with Dark Flash. Um, just to make sure we definitely have an attack we can use. Psychic Recharge twice. And we're going to win with that Mars Shadow. So we can see again, Chimeco kind of allowing us to take control of the early game there and making it so that my opponent couldn't get started until I was already comfortably in the lead. And that way we just are able to win the trade that we need to win in order to beat these Zorark decks. And uh, like I said before, this was just such a sketchy matchup earlier, I think, like before the Chimeco. And we saw we did end up still losing that first game, but it was very close. I definitely felt like I was in the game, probably closer than I would have been otherwise. Uh, excuse the noise, guys. We are working on the basement here at Full Grip Games. So uh, yeah, getting that all worked out. I think there's gonna be a gym down there eventually. So that is awesome. And shout out to Full Grip again for the amazing studio. Appreciate that. And I'm excited to be working here myself in the next couple of weeks. So only like two or three more weeks until that's happening. And then uh, just the content's gonna be amazing. Uh, as it is right now, like I said, I'm going to class. Uh, I'm burning the candle at both ends uh, for sure. Uh, I was at work all day today teaching and then just coming here and now we've been recording and it's just a lot, a lot, a lot going on. But uh, I do it because I love it, honestly, and I love making videos for you guys, so it's a lot of fun for me as well. Shout out to Danny Altavila for winning the Memphis Regional Championships. Awesome stuff. And I hope you guys all had fun there. Let me know how you ended up at uh, the Memphis Regionals if you went in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell, check out the Etsy store and the Patreon stuff in the description below. Peace.